of the night in the NBA. Mr. 40,000 points and company and the Lakers hosting the team leading the Western Conference, the Oklahoma City Thunder. And I can't believe I am saying that as we get into March. But the Lakers did fall behind 20 to 8. Then they went on, you ready for this? A 102 to 65 run, led by 25 mid fourth quarter before winning by 12. Keyshawn Johnson, good morning to you. You must be a happy camper this morning. <laughs> Not, not really. I'm patient, though, Skip. Right. You already know that. Yeah. I mean, when I look at the situation last night, yeah, you get a little in the beginning. You're like, here we go again. The first mm -hmm. nine minutes or so in the game, yeah. they fall behind 22 to 11, and then yeah. all of a sudden, boom, they roar back, and, and then they don't miss a beat. Okay. So, as a lifelong Laker fan from out here in Los Angeles, what ultimately did they show you last night? Well, I, I think you start off with Anthony Davis. The difference between the loss to, on Saturday to the Denver Nuggets was four free throw attempts for him, yep. 17 points. All right? Last night he had 24 points, 11 free throw attempts against OKC, which is a, a much smaller front line, of course. It's not as, as big yeah. as Denver's front line, but he took advantage of the situation. Here it is again, not caring about the three-point uh, shot. No. Staying his butt down low, running the floor with LeBron James, doing By all the way, of those By the way, he sorts. made 10 of 11 free throws, so go ahead. Made 10 of 11 free throws, but doing all of the things that he should have done against Denver. That didn't happen. But you also had great play by, by uh, D'Lo. You also had great play by Austin Reeves. You had great play by LeBron James, a double-double, two assists away from a triple-double. So with Hachimura, when you start looking at the way that they played against a team that they've beaten three out of four times this year, they felt good about knowing they could beat OKC because they'd done it before. Mm -hmm. Different than Denver. Denver beat them, what, eight out of the last so many tries? They well, eight, eight in a row or whatever row. the case. Yeah. So you, you start to look at that and you say to yourself, OK, this team has the ability to really do some things. It, it, you look at December, they won the whatever, in-season tournament. Mm -hmm. January, not so good. Here in the month of February, they've won 10 of the last 14 games. Yeah. Now, in there, there's been some... You know, cupcakes along the way, not great teams. But now down this so-called stretch <clears throat> this month, they're going to start to see better teams like OKC and the Minnesotas of the world. They saw Denver. Can they continue this up, though? Can they all of a sudden hit that groove? Because when they go toward the end of the season, eight of the last ten games are on the road. If you want to not find yourself in a play-in situation again this year, you've <clears throat> got to take care of business. I... I kind of shared with you and the other guys uh, a while ago about just the confidence level of them getting things turned around at some point in the second half of the season where you'll feel good and so far mm -hmm. so good. Yeah. Okay. I hear everything you just said. And I agree with just about everything you just said because it's hard on this morning to disagree with anything Lakers. But I'm going to go you one better, if not five better. That team I saw last night go on that run from, as you say, it was, it was 20 to 8 and then 22 to 11. Yes. If they went on a 102 to 65 run against the best team record-wise in the Western Conference. That team I saw last night for that stretch best team in the National Basketball Association. That's why I picked them before the season was last night. They dominated a very good, young, but having arrived team. I I'm going to remind everybody, this Oklahoma City team on the back-to-backs they have played so far this year, they are setting an NBA record. They have won their back-to-backs by 18.7 points per game. So think about that. Let's just call it by 19 points per game, they have won every back-to-back -back that they have played until last night when the Lakers said, no, not here, not now. And the Lakers have beaten this team the last three times, which is why I told you whenever it was last week, the Lakers are looking up from the, the 10 hole in the West. Yeah. They're looking at number one, and they're saying, okay, what if we have to fight through the play-in to get to the eight seed to play the number one seed? You think they're worried about the Oklahoma City? They are not worried about them. Think they're worried about Minnesota? They are not worried about Minnesota. Are they worried about Denver? Well, sure they are because they can't beat Denver, but they can play the hell out of Denver every time they play them because 
They've lost eight in a row, but six of the last seven times against Denver, it's been nip-tuck all through the fourth quarter. They just can't figure out how to close a game against the Denver Nuggets. But don't tell me they're intimidated by the Nuggets because there's no reason to be, and they're not, because they, they fight them tooth and nail. They, they go blow for blow with them through fourth quarter after fourth quarter. And the other night, as we know, we talked about it yesterday, the Saturday night game with 322, LeBron's got the ball in his hands and they're only down one point. And then you know what happened. They lost 13 to four down the stretch. So it was kind of the flip side and microcosm of what happened last night. But the beauty of last night to me was Oklahoma City came out like a team that is going to win yet another back-to-back. -back. They had just gone to Phoenix, as you know, the oh, night before. Yeah. So they're playing back-to-back. -back. And Phoenix took its best shot. Again, they didn't have Book. They didn't have Devin Booker. But they took their best shot at Oklahoma City down the stretch. And Shea Gilgis Alexander and company said, no, 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 we got this. So I'm thinking, uh-oh, are they going to sustain that and bring it right to you last night? Because as you said early on, it looked like the young thunder with their young legs. It looked like, yeah, right? Yeah, we was, miss, we was missing some shots. We turned the ball over. like crazy. Yeah, turned the ball okay. over, I want to say, about nine times in the first... Seven, 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 times, seven in the times in the first quarter. Yeah, in the first in quarter. The first we quarter. turned seven it over Seven times in the first quarter? Yeah, but we turned it over a lot in a short amount of time. Okay. No, not even the first quarter. It was something like the first six or seven minutes. It, it was, was just like, here you go. It was, and Austin Reeves was a main culprit of that. A couple okay, times. I'm going to remind everyone... What is probably the biggest reason, other than Shea Gilgis Alexander, that the Oklahoma City Thunder have the best record in the West? I should say had past tense, because now they've slipped a half game back. Biggest reason to me, they lead the league in creating turnovers. They lead the league in creating turnovers. So you got hit with their usual buzzsaw early in this game, the game. Right? And all of a sudden, no, no, no. And guess who set the tone? Mr. 40,000 set the tone, not on offense, on defense. LeBron knuckled down and buckled down on the defensive end the way I don't see him do it on a regular basis because he just, he's 30, what is he, 39 years of age in year well, 21. Well, he picked his spots. He picked his spot last night. He wasn't going to allow them to come in here and just it, score at the It was. Wheel. It was a beautiful thing to watch because he knows that they know they're better than Oklahoma City. So he said at whatever score you want to pick, 22 to 11 or 20 to 8, right in there, he's like, no, 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 no. Watch this. And he gave you extreme energy on the yes. defensive end. He made Absolutely. several plays on the defensive end that set the tone on the offensive end. And it was more of a blue-collar night for him, which I love to watch him. Listen, he's averaging seven rebounds this year. Keyshawn, you and I know if he put his mind to it, could he average 10 or 11? Sure he could. He's 6'9", 2, whatever we give him, 250, but he is still... But he's also got to stay out of foul trouble. Okay, so all right, that's fine, that's that fine. Position. But, but he, he can still bang with the best of them. So I'm going to show you two quick LeBron plays. Tone setters in this game. Uh, let's get the first one here. It came with... Um, let's do the first one in order. Uh, well, let, I'm sorry, I've got them backwards here. Let, let's do... This is a block of Chet Holmgren. If we could... This is a block of a, of a lob pass to Chet Holmgren that looked like an easy lob dunk from Jalen Williams. And guess who came from the backside and got it? LeBron. And look, at, it leaves Chet on the floor like he just ragdolled him. and He didn't foul him. But that's a big-time basketball play because it's going to be bang stuff, right? Oh, yeah. And he got him good. And then they went to the other end, and D'Lo just got a layup because Chet wasn't ready to play defense and rim protect. Okay, that, that's... That's a hustle play. Yes. That's the equivalent of a chase down block, except it's just weak side defense. Okay? So that's one where his teammates are like, oh, you know, like, oh, well, again, he's playing. Like I said to you, Skip, you're talking about a smaller front line. So yep. it was Anthony Davis. I mean, Chet is so, long and tall, but he's not physical. Yeah, yes. but, but you're also talking about.